Hi everyone, in this tutorial we're going to be taking a look at the new Viral on Packet service. This is the ability to run a viral server in the cloud using the Packet.net platform. For the method covered in this tutorial, you must be an existing viral user with your viral server already installed either on VMware Workstation, Fusion, ESXi or on a bare metal system. You also must have a valid viral license key and that needs to be installed on your server. We're now going to take a look at how the system will work. Your viral server, your local viral server, is going to act as a launcher communicating to the packet.net platform. And we're going to take a look at how this works. On your viral server, you're going to run a command. This pulls in something known as a Terraform toolset. The Terraform toolset is then able to talk to the platform provider, packet.net, requesting that a server be spun up. Once that server has actually been spun up, the viral software set is then installed onto it. At the end of that installation process, the system will come back and will provide a series of credentials to you, giving you SSH access from your viral server to the system in the cloud, and also connection information for OpenVPN. With this information, you're then able to connect SSH from your local viral server, or you're able to open a VPN tunnel from the host system where you are having your OpenVPN client software installed. Once you're finished with the system, again, the system will communicate to the packet.net API gateway and will issue the termination instructions to the viral server. The viral server will be running on the packet.net bare metal hosting platform. Packet.net offer a range of different servers, each with their associated charge. This is an hourly charging fee, and this is in addition to the money you've already paid in order to obtain your viral license key. You must register with Packet.net in order to use the platform. Using the URL shown on the screen here, you're able to sign up and obtain a $25 credit, which will go against the charges you incur as you use the platform. As part of the registration process, you will need to associate a credit card or PayPal account with your registration and you'll also then obtain an API key, which we'll then be using later on during the installation instructions. So how do you get started? You're gonna bring up your viral system, going to log in, and then you're going to be issuing a set of commands. The first of those is gonna be uh, vinstall salt, just to get everything set up. And then the next is gonna be sudo salt-call dash l debug state.sls viral.terraform. That state's going to take a few minutes to run, and when it's complete, you'll have a new directory, viral underscore packet, and we're now gonna take a look at what's in there. Please review the salt.readme file. This contains vital instructions for the operation of the system. Please also review the disclaimer.txt. This covers regulations governing the use of the system, both from a viral perspective and from a packet.net perspective. We're now going to edit some of the fields in the settings.tf file. We need to replace the bad API key with a good API key. So we need the API key value that we received from packet.net and paste that in the field there. Make sure there are no leading spaces or trailing spaces. We can also change the bare metal system type if we want. This allows us to choose if we wish to use the bigger system, the bare metal three with 128 gigs of memory or the smaller system, bare metal one at 32 gigs of memory. And we also want to review the dead man's timer. The dead man's timer is currently set to four hours. That means after four hours, the system will terminate unless you change that to a higher timer or remove the dead man's timer value. The dead man's timer is there to act as an automatic shutdown should you forget to shut the system down once you're done. This will therefore limit your bill to the maximum length of time as that specified by the dead man timer value. Next, we're gonna take a look at the passwords.tf file. This contains passwords that are gonna be used by the system as it's being constructed. You can adjust these to suit your needs, but please pay attention to the fact that you need to stick to alphanumerics, no special characters, and in some cases there is a maximum length on the password. Please remember that the password.tf file is regenerated each time the viral.terraform state is called. So if you run that state to get an update of the software, it will result in your password.tf file being updated. This means that the passwords will change and may mean that the password you're expecting to be applied is not the one that's applied, so please check this carefully. With the changes made, we can now review our plan file, confirm that there are no errors in it, by using the command terraform 
space plan, space dot, and then we will see a series of output. If there are syntax errors, the terraform plan command is going to report them and you won't be able to proceed. The example you see here on the screen is an example of expected output. This is what you should be seeing. Assuming that's all good, we can then issue the command terraform apply dot, and this will then start the process of bringing up a viral server in the cloud. When the server completes, we should see a completion message and a series of output giving our access coordinates to our system. The viral server is secured once it's been actually been provisioned. You have two methods for access. One is SSH, the other is using OpenVPN. You therefore need to install an OpenVPN compliant client for your appropriate platform in order to be able to access the system. The OpenVPN client is going to be installed on your workstation or laptop. You must remember that a new OpenVPN client file is generated each time a viral server on packet is instantiated. So that means if you have an old client OVPN file, it will not work with a new viral on packet server. So we need to now copy out the content of our client OVPN file to then be able to establish our tunnel connection. The client OVPN file can be found in the directory from where you ran the terraform apply command. And this is a plain text file. So we can take the content of this, copy it, and then paste it into a text file. So here we are, we're pasting that into a text file which is going to be called client.ovpn and I'm saving that on my workstation. I'm using the tunnel blick OpenVPN tunnel client. So I'm now going to add the client file to the tunnel blick system and connect. This is now establishing an OpenVPN tunnel to my server in the cloud. And here we can see as that's progressing, it's authorizing, and is then going to start to put the pieces of configuration in place to establish my tunnel. The terraform show command will give me the command outputs that were seen at the end of the terraform apply command. So I can use this for reference. I'm able to now SSH directly into my viral server running on the packet platform and issue the normal commands like this OpenStack command. Using the command ATQ, I can then review when the dead man's timer is going to fire. Please read the readme file for more details on the dead man timer operation. So now I can connect to my server at the target IP address of 172.16.11.254. Now if I want to see my username and password, again I can use the output of the terraform show command. So logging in as guest with the password. And just to be clear here, I'm talking to the UW interface of my viral server running on the packet platform. And there we have our usual UWM interface. And here we can see 32 gigs available and the full set of virtual machine images. So right now it's going to operate exactly as a regular viral server, as if it was running locally on your laptop or on a local server, except now this is sitting out in the cloud. So we're going to quickly design a little simulation using the web editor here. Add a few nodes. Popping in the file name and we're ready to launch. So the simulation is coming up now. And if we look at the external connections, you'll see it's got the 172.16.11.254 address appearing. So that's the source IP address there. And we're just going to connect in using the console port onto our iOS V router. And then we can see that's coming up. So now I'm going to bring up my VM Maestro client and point it at my server in the cloud. In order for this to work, I have to have my OpenVPN tunnel connected to my packet server, and that tunnel must be running on the host where I'm running my VM Maestro client. So I'm setting uh, the name for the profile and the IP address again, 172.16.11.254. So this is talking across my OpenVPN tunnel. 
and I'm going to set my username. So I'm going to pick up the password there and apply. Good. OK, now we've really got our simulation up and running in the cloud. So we press the simulations panel there. We can see we've got some nodes already active. So we're going to grab that view. And we're going to try and connect. So going in over the console port. And there we are, we're in to our target node in the cloud. All right, so let's spin up another one. Now this topology is using static console ports. So that's coming up right now. So once the node goes active, we'll get the connection option. Uh, there it is for the static console port. So that's then going in on that particular device. Now, because we're going in over a tunnel, it's not just via Maestro that's connecting in here. We can use our own uh, Telnet client. So we're going to 172.16.11.52. So that's the management LXC. And then going in on port 11,000. So that's that console port that we've set up, a static console port onto the iOS v3 router. So that's from my laptop over the tunnel straight into the console port. And now ready to terminate my viral server on the packet platform. So I need to go back to the system from which I launched this. So this is back to my viral uh, server that's running locally on my laptop. So from my viral system, I'm now issuing the command terraform destroy dot. And that then terminates the server on the packet network. We see the messages confirming that's going down. And if we just go in onto the packet management uh, portal, we can then see there are no active servers uh, in the cloud. So that system has now been terminated and we're ready to start over. I need to just emphasize that nothing is retained on the server. So once you've terminated that server, anything that you've added to it, be that configuration, third party virtual machine images, all of that is lost. And you'll have to go through the process again the next time you start your viral server up on the packet platform to reinstall any additional elements that you've added to the system.